Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. The Batman Anniversary issue number 400 is the name of the game today. A super card of comic book talent from the 1980s. But first, Jimmy, what do you have? I have patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where I have recently uploaded this 2013 Street Angel sketchbook. I have about a dozen of these zines, mini comics, and out of print classics that you can download on my Patreon. Lots of original art, scripts. Basically, the process that I make comics is all on display on my Patreon. So join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Tom, what do you have? I have Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics from 10 Speed Press. Uh, I have Fantastic Four Grand Design from Marvel Comics. Uh, check out my Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com and search Tom Scholey and see the comics that I'm working on right now as I uh, work on them. And uh, check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics in the Wild, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. Uh, two issues of the series are in the comic shops as we speak. And I put new comics out every uh, every four weeks. So get it put on your pull list. Order, pre-order them from your comic shop. Or you can hit up the Fantagraphics website at my link tree in the description below this video to get your hands on these comics. Uh, also, my Patreon, patreon.com slash headpiscor, has uh, all the Red Room material up there before it hits paper. We're into the fifth issue of serialization right now, over 100 pages, new strips every Tuesday, and it just costs you three bucks to go there. Now, fellas, let's take a look at Batman number 400 with the... Nice set of talent. We could just stop and not yeah. cover, man. Bill I love Sinkevich that Sinkevich killing it. Cover. Absolutely, man. Using probably like you know some sort of blue monochromatic underpainting, and I was thinking like if he wouldn't have, imagine how bright that red would be. <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny to see a super garishly bright Robin next to this version of Batman. <laughs> Heck of a cover. Uh, the thing that is sort of different comparing this to the Superman 400 issue is that this is this is really one big story. Yeah, kind of a pretty straight narrative. Yeah, Doug Munch on, on the ones and twos in terms of writing, and uh, your artists get between, say, two to eight pages apiece, man. Introduction by Stephen King off the, off the bat here, man, and he sort of taps into one of those bits that kind of comes up in conversation a lot with your sort of, like, popular lay comics fan uh, from pop culture, man. Uh, who's your guy, Superman or Batman? He's the Batman guy. I think he's written a couple of pieces on Batman. I, I feel like there was an intro from from Stephen King in another Batman book that I had that's a totally different piece. It's uh -huh. much more about, um, you know, Batman as this creature of the night kind of piece. Yeah, I think that was like a, an issue of detective, like some kind of anniversary detective issue. And... Um... And like his, some of the quotes from this Stephen King piece are like plastered onto editions of Dark Knight Returns. That makes total sense. That's funny. Resurrection Knight is the name of uh, the story. And reading this for the first time, mind you, because I, I had this comment just looking at the pretty pictures. Uh, this is the Nightfall story. Mm -hmm. uh, ten years before, you know, Nightfall comes out. The idea of letting loose all the bad guys... And putting Batman through his paces, whittling him down. There's a part where uh, Killer Croc is even saying, like, I want to break the Batman's back. Yeah. It, it all foretells, you know, what's to come. Jim, I think that issue you were talking about with the other Stephen King piece is also, like, Batman ends up in a wheelchair. And then there's some young guy who's going to take over as the temporary <laughs> Batman. And something, you know, all before the 90s stuff. It, this, it, well, let's, let's, keep, let's keep that train of thought going. Because we did that Trevor Von Eden uh, Batman special. And uh, Raz Al Ghul was the bad guy mm -hmm. there. And when, they, when Batman and uh, Raz Al Ghul like, first met each other's faces... Uh, it's all, you could almost lift the dialogue from that comic and put it into this comic. We're like, you're not dead. No, the Lazarus Pit didn't. <laughs> blah blah blah. Like it's like literally the same stuff. And then you see his daughter, and uh, she's like, you know, Roddy Piper or somebody. Like she could either be good one time or, yeah. or, or bad the next. Steve Lytle, yeah, rest in peace, man. Is the is the guy who does this 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 first sequence, and he's, this first he's really strong. Is nice. Yeah, he's really really strong, man. It's panel after panel that looks good. Uh, he, he really delivers, you know, like some of the the they look menacing. Yeah, you know, like it's cool and colorful and cartoony, but they look menacing. Like when they're behind bars, when they're breaking out, like you know, props to the colorist for making this feel like this is not a fun 
Batman story. Like this is quite a quite a panel. And everybody <laughs> gets a chance to draw the hell out of that yeah, right. giant penny. <laughs> I like this part. Know your foes. It's like taped on his computer, dude. That's like uh, you know the Steve Ditko uh, studio studio photo, man. <laughs> Thimp. <laughs> <laughs> That thing, like where they go in the woods and all the costumes are hanging up, I, I, I really like that. It kind of reminds me of like Miracle Man when like all the people's flesh are kind of hang, hanging up. Isn't there like you're done with Arthurian legend and mm-hmm. stuff? Isn't there like one of the the part with the Black Knight, like like the the knights meet the Black Knight and there's like a tree full of shields and mm-hmm. stuff, and you have yeah. to like come get your stuff. That that thing of all the costumes hanging out when they break out of Arkham. I, I wanted to steal that for superpowers. Ne- never got around to it. Teeing it up, man. Yeah. So perfectly teeing it up for George Perez. Because mm-hmm. Steve Lido's going to like give you all the costumes. Now we need the guy who's a master of drawing a million guys in a panel. Yeah, and the woods are even menacing. Like Those are really good trees for being you know, a creepy night background. Yeah, it's a thick woods too. And Perez always looks great on newsprint. He does. And and you got your mystery villain who's organizing the whole thing. Like he's right. still a mystery at this point. They 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 don't wait too long to reveal him, but yeah, he's still a mystery. And then we have Paris Collins, who uh, is doing the Bullock part of uh, the, of the story. Not familiar with Paris's work. Yeah, I mean he did a bunch of New Gods comics with Mark Evanier. Did he do New Gods when they relaunched? Like mm-hmm. the very yeah, first like right relaunch. after the the Starlin stuff. All right, man, we've seen him on the cover. Let's mm-hmm. check out those interiors. That's Look at awesome. this Boland Bat Cave with all the white. It just bleeds off. I mean, that is amazing. Yeah, man. Did I say Boland? Uh, Sikavich. Sikavich, yeah. Sikavich. Yeah, we know what you mean. He's yeah. having some fun. Like, like this is really an interesting Sinkevich time period. I mean, it's yeah. 86, so, you know, he, he's kind of at the top of his game for my money. This is going to be rolling into Electra Assassin and stuff, but you see him bringing in cartoony elements, interesting page designs, really interpreting Batman in a unique way. Great fit for Batman. Yeah. When, when he was when he was a kid, uh, you know, he admitted that his his new Adams, mm-hmm. you know, approach. And right here he's this is like anti new Adams yes, comics. Totally. He's not gonna be compared to him uh in this sequence. Interesting Batman Sinkevich thing popped up on my radar this week. He was gonna draw a David Lapham run on Batman and he drew mm-hmm. like the first issue. Lapham posted it as a PDF. So uh, oh, it's nice. on my iP- iPad now, and I recommend everybody else put it on theirs. Again, demolishing that pe- that penny. Look at that drawing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, dude. Yeah, pretty intense, too, these pages. You know, like a lot of line work on these, a lot of hatching, a lot of, of scratching lines onto the page. You don't want to be the dud. Yeah. That's true. You Great know? lettering, too. Look at that R. If this is a battle royal, you don't want to be uh, Bushwhacker Luke jumping in and jumping out <laughs> in 13 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's he's bringing like the Batman's internal psychology to the surface, to the outside. This is one of the uh, reasons why I scooped this comic up, man. The the Art Adams Terry Austin bit mm-hmm. because we just don't see uh, very much Art Adams in DC at all. And I was very curious to see what his Batman was like. That's a great Batmobile. Love that half splash there on page one. Yeah, great atmosphere uh, for the backgrounds and stuff. Makes me think he's working from like full script or something because there's just not the kind of dynamics that I'm used to in his artwork. But he's also still very young here. Yeah, there are moments that feel very much like him. Like even this kind of uh, slight overhead shot where you're getting the tiled floor feels very uh, Art Adams esque. Yeah. yeah, and, 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 and we're then, s- we're seeing like a Marshall Rogers influence for sure here. I, th- I think that's fair. And then we're getting into the. Uh, Art Adams Deadline Crunch <laughs> section I love of the busting comic. a chair though. That's such a pro wrestling move. Yeah, it is, man. Go go back one. They gave him a good section of pages too. This feels so Rob Liefeld esque to me. Yeah, good. You know, we always wow. think of uh, Art Adams as an influence on Liefeld, and I feel like that panel mm-hmm. speaks to it. Yeah, even this kind of, actually, you know, X Force Two kind of imagery. Yeah, it's a nice sequence. This issue is such a good one for having a bunch of these artists that I'm interested in seeing. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's going like, from Sienkiewicz to Art Adams, like that's about the price of admission for me. Everybody wants a shot at Batman, too, so they you, all get one. You don't want to be the dud. Tom Sutton. Uh, Tom Sutton's a guy that would always be... Um, oh, no, never mind. I was thinking Joe Stanton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You think of Frank Sutton from Gomer Pyle. <laughs> <laughs> Golly! Doing a, like a passable job, you know? Not bad. Like, like Some a, nice panels. That's a pretty sweet panel, I think. It's 
funny too to see influences like Neil Adams influences. You know, some of the Sutton pages feel like there's uh, some some of the Neil Adams Batman legacy on display there. Yeah, sure, that's super fair. Steve Lee Aloha, man, doing that that uh, eight panel tier gimmick, the thick uh, golden thick age panel mm-hmm. borders. This is also the gimmick for this story. So good showing off Batman's rogues gallery yeah. with different artists, you know, kind of getting mm-hmm. to focus on a different character or two each time. How about the atmosphere of this Joe Kubert stuff? Amazing. And letters by Andy, young Andy Kubert. Could be so young at this time, man. And, and that's rough lettering. This is a really nice piece, too, to get a Joe Kubert pencils and inks on a, on a story. This it's always is a, good. a cool sequence for Batman that I don't know that I've seen before of him, like, crawling out of the uh-huh. muck, you know. Precious little superhero uh, artwork from, from Joe Kubert, man. So, you know, you saw it in Batman Black, Black and White. Turns out he did a little cup of coffee in this. Always a pleasure to look at Joe Kubert's work. Absolutely, man. And and it makes me wish that there was just some more superhero stuff to check out. Like, there's so much of that army stuff that it's mm-hmm. just like, come on, man. Ken Stacy, Staple of 80s comics. Yeah. Yeah, I always think of him with his airbrushing color. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, something different to see him doing pen and ink work. Doing a little Shioli gimmick right there, <laughs> man, with the sign in his pages. It's a good gimmick. <laughs> Rick Leonardi and Carl Kessel, baby. Leonardi's a guy that I have not read a lot of, and man, do people talk him up. And, and prose, too. You know, like, I, I swear every Savage Dragon Letters column, uh, Larson would be talking about how good he is and stuff. But I know lots of people that love his work, and I just haven't read a lot of his comics. Yeah, man. Cloak and Dagger. Good figure artist. Spider-Man 2099. Those, those fill-in um, X-Men joints. The, the Genosha issues. Real sick. Yeah, I'm not complaining about the comics I have seen by him. Some fun Batman interpretation. And then we close it out, man, with, you know, Headliner. Freaking Brian Boland. So good. Doing some shit. So strong. Yeah. He's another one you just don't get very many interiors. And then to put it on newsprint, you know, Tom, you mentioned that on one of these artists. So good on newsprint. Look at how mean, dude. Mm -hmm. The neck veins. Almost like that judge punching through that mask kind of pose. Smashes his fingers, super red. It's interesting, and like looking through this, flipping the bowl and pages, each page feels like it has that anchor type. Oh yeah, image. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that, I mean, like you gotta, you gotta use Bullet for all he's worth, man. Not make him do a bunch of. That's a great spread. Nonsense. Just a, an incredible spread. Yeah, and there's there's that you know like the Batman. From the killing joke. You yeah, know, totally, that, man. That sneer. They all figured out that penny. You think about it, it's like, it's like, it ain't much, but they all figure out ways to, to kind of like add some stuff to it. It's such a weird piece of Batman. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is like, po- like the Superman one was pre-Crisis on Infinite Earth, so this is post, so I guess... Like that penny's still part of his history. You know, they, they had a chance to get rid of it and they, they left it in. <laughs> But popular demand. And then you get a page, man, where he's adding some, doing some rogues gallery stuff. I feel like that penny is good, like, if, if you have, like, Batman or some character giving some, like, rousing speech standing in front of, like, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln as he delivers it. He should talk to him. <laughs> you know, when and have it talk out, back. He's working out the yeah. case details. I mean, he's talking to Bats right here. Yeah. Saying what's up to his friends. It's no worse than talking to, like, a 12-year-old orphan that you've uh, kidnapped. And <laughs> How about this grill piece? Yeah, that's sharp. With this vomiting uh, gargoyle. <laughs> that vomit is uh, Barry Windsor Smith-esque. Yeah, it is. Kaluta. A reserved rights in. Yeah. Very, uh, yeah, not a lot there. I not if a, that was a deadline crunch. Yeah, not as sensationalistic as his Superman. And he's he's done ba- uh, Batman in the Swamp Thing comics mm-hmm. with those giant horns and and that yeah, spawn and that spawn cape. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's kind of like the father of the treatment that Batman gets in sort of like the mid to late eighties. Right. Steve Rude, man, so mm-hmm. good. Yeah, the color's interesting too. Rude's always impressive with like doing a character, like a mm-hmm. pinup kind of character. I feel like he always nails that. Very true, man. Fun to look at this stuff. I, I love when they stunt cast and create these super card comics. It, this will not be the last of them that we check out. 
feel like these are where the editor really earns their their strike. Can you imagine? See, see try- what their Rolodex is mm-hmm. like. <laughs> like, and and you got to like know the personalities of your artists and stuff. So you have to get Brian Bolin to start working on his pages in 1982, <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe it'll be done by October 1986. Anyhow, K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rug, where you can download out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can see my original art, scripts, process, all the ways I make the comics I make on Patreon.com slash Jim Rug. Uh, read Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Fantastic Four Grand Design, and uh, watch the Total Recall show on YouTube. Red Room Comics in the wild, two issues on the stands as we speak, and new issues come out every four weeks. Get them at your local comic shop or the Fantagraphics website at my link tree in the description below this video, or hit up my Patreon and read it uh, right this minute online at uh, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks for the archive there. Over 100 pages of comics up there. What else, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. All right, man. Given the Martian orders, we're going to be on our way. Read more comics.